Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. B-Pal Picks Edition. By the way, the B part of B-Pal is Pro Joe. Professor Joe Boric. Call him Professor because he's freaking awesome. He does all the baseball picks for the Patreon that we ha- that I have. If uh, I'm doing these picks for you now on Friday night, as the summer gets, I won't be doing that. Weekends, I won't be giving you picks. So if you want those, head over to our Patreon. He has gone so far this year. Uh, he was at uh, three, three for four, three for three, what f- five for seven so far. Killer, killer, killer baseball capper. Uh, that's that's so so you know. And and did you know what that was? You should know. Everybody in the land should know. Everybody's doing it. All the cool kids. It's the Perlo dance. And I had to do it because I ha- I apparently I haven't been doing it. I didn't even know that. And uh, the uh, Bobby Crane from Prune Home, Indianapolis, and Celicia Annie Flett from Ukraine. I can't pronounce this town, so don't even ask me to. Shen Shi Lu from Shao, China. And Karen Price from Melbourne, Australia, all wrote asking, how come you're not doing the Perlo dance anymore? That's all they that's all they said. That was a small letter to send me all that, but and I said, Well, you know, I didn't realize I wasn't, so there you go. Perlo dance for you. And uh, Helen, we've had to wrap her. Helen is the one that stitches and sews all your pearls of wisdom necklaces up and uh, that we send in the pearlocopter. She, we had to wrap up her fingers. She's getting bloody on the end of them because of all the subscribers that we're getting to the channel. Uh, thank you for that, for subscribing. It really helps out the channel a lot. And we're going for a grand. 1,000 because when we do when we get a thousand we get some money from YouTube YouTube starts paying I'm doing this completely for free for you guys right now so if you could hit the subscribe button you know all those little things like the little things you can do for your fellow man hitting the subscribe button would be one of those little things coffee okay so is that all I wanted to say I guess that's all I wanted to say. Let's get to our, oh, I'm going to have, if you, I'm going to give you a quick picks now because it says in the title, I'll do that sort of thing. Give you the quick picks. Now remember, I can change my mind on quick picks, like right away. Um, there is a, there's actually two picks in here I don't have odds for. So you'll have to watch the video or watch, you'll have to watch this or go to my Patreon to get the odds for for it um, although I can bring it up here why don't I do that to make sure see if the odds are ready now let's refresh even if I don't have odds I'll, I'll give you some quick picks on it because that's just the kind of guy I am anyways I'm about to give you quick picks uh, and then uh, you'll find out that my picks I give you quickly can change even in the time that I start to say why we made those picks, which we do later in the video. We're going to look at well, the picks we did for tonight, which is the 9th. And we're going to look at the picks we're doing for the 10th. And I'm also going to explain a little bit a system that I've started working out since doing since I started doing all the totals and all the um, sides for every game that has made it so I'm making money all the time. Maybe not huge money, but I'm making money all the time. And apparently, a fellow that I I got this from, part of this algorithm, I guess you want to call it, they like to call it algorithm, was Professor MJ. He, and he even told me that professional cappers, only 5% of them actually make money over a long term. And I'm finding that I'm one of those. 
through doing this system. So we'll talk about that later. Okay, here's some quick picks for you. I know you're all at the edge of your seat. You need to get going. You don't have time to listen to the whole video and all that. that that's fine. But for those of you that do, I'll tell you, the frolic. Whoo, it's going to be amazing. Um, by the way, before you go, I'll tell you one more thing. That's it. Trade deadline Monday. Get over to Off the Wall Hockey, John. Off the Wall Hockey. Off the Wall Hockey. Off the Wall Hockey. Write it down. You got your pen out because you're going to give you these picks, your crayons and your protractors and all that because I'm going to give you these picks. Off the Wall Hockey. Monday from 8 in the morning till 8 in the morning Mountain or 10 in the morning Eastern till 3. I'm going to be on for the whole day with him doing trade trade deadline stuff, which is usually my show, the Perlo Wisdom, Perlo Wisdom NHL show, NHL Perlo Wisdom show, however you want to say it, from 3 to 5 Eastern, Monday to Friday. But that day, I'm going to be over on that channel, not this channel. Okay, here you go. Panthers, ML, under 5.5. Ba um, Bruins, ML, under 5.5. Hurricanes, puck line, over 5.5. Blackhawks, money line, under five and a half. Jets, money line, over five and a half. Ottawa, or sorry, Toronto, I scared you there, didn't I? Leafs, puck line, over six. Uh, Tampa Bay, oh no, Nashville, puck line, under five and a half. This is the one I don't have, see, there's no odds. But I'm, I'll give it to you anyways. Minnesota, money line, over five and a half, assuming that's what the total is, and it probably is. Flames, money line, under six. And Sharks, money line, over five and a half. There you go. Off you go. And now we're going to talk about, off you go. Thanks for coming in. We love you. Now, uh, you're, you're special to us, okay? Now, what I would like you to do, first of all, put all your crayons and your protractors away. Just don't leave them all willy-nilly all over the environment where I got to go get Guido to pick them all up for you, all right? All right, okay, I, want, I wanted to mention that. I would organize your time a little better, though, to get this whole video in. It's essential living, my friends, essential living. Off you go. Okay, let's go to... Our picks for the ninth and see how we did. Uh, the Golden Knights won 7 4, and we had the Golden Knights and the over. We didn't have a lot on it though, we just had a unit. I don't know why I was scared of this game. Coyotes were playing well. I think I just sometimes I just talk into my head. I Golden Knights were kind of have been kind of struggling. They came out of it here, they smoked it, we got the over and we got the under, or we got the, we got the over and we got the line. And I only took it on the line, so we actually got about, just about one and a quarter units out of it. This one, woo, woo, Perla Dance, Perla Dance, Perla Dance. Five units, this was the pick of the night. Avalanche, puck line, boom, nailed it. it. Was paying 180 something or other. So for five units, 80 times is what? Just uh, four, almost four units. So now we're up, what, five and a half units? But there's more. We had a unit on the under. Uh, so we got that too. Now, I want to tell you something here. The system that I was just telling you about, what I've learned is for my over-unders and sometimes with my lines, what I'll do is I'll cover my bet. And I'll say, if a team is going to win. Now, I thought here that if the Ducks were going to win, it was likely going to be an under. I did not know that Johansson was going to go in, though. That So it kind of scared me. It was kind of like a game-time decision that Johansson went in. But at the time, I thought if they do win, it's because Gibson goes off and they happen to beat out the Avalanche and it's almost certainly going to be an under. So if I would have lost my five bet, I would have gained a unit back on the under if the Ducks went. Doesn't sound like much. 
But over time, and this is the way you should be betting, is over time, keeping the tabs of how much you're spending. It's also how to stop yourself from being a, bet, a gambler, having a gambling problem. We're not trying to make all our money all at one time. This is an investment. That's the way to do it. Professor MJ, by the way, uh, check him out, his channel. He's very good. He's a statistics professor. And I don't use his algorithm totally, but I do listen to a lot of what he has to say and apply it to my picks. I think he's very good. Uh, so this is what I started to do. Now, this was totally by accident, actually. I just started giving totals and sides for the sake of just for the heck of it. Just give it to everybody. Nobody else is doing it, so I'll do it. I know I'm really good at this. I can, you know, hit pretty darn good. So in doing so, though, I've come up with this, and I'm ending up actually, oh, look at this. The kings may come back here. The kings could come back. Um, I wanted to do this video earlier, and I was going to say, if you want to do a live bet, the kings were outplaying the sharks considerably, and I really thought that they couldn't come back from 3-1 in the first, and they just might. Now, we have... The under, or we had the over here, so we need one more goal for the over. We also had the Kings, okay? Now, I took the Kings because it was pretty much a coin flip. But if the Sharks win, it was almost certainly going to be an over. That meant that they got through to Peterson. I think the Kings were at least going to go score two. The Sharks usually win on overs. So the, the over was to cover my bet. And the line was to add if it came through, if the Kings came through. So if the Kings came through, we would have, we can break even. If the Kings do come through on the over, which it looks like they might, we're set. But the odds are, we're making the odds here that we're going to break even. And uh, maybe 20% of the time go over. But seldom are we going to lose it all. That's what we're trying to do. Capitals versus the Sabres. By the way, we're up huge, right? Right, up huge. Capitals versus the Sabres. We had the Capitals in regulation, which paid 160 on three bet, on large pearls, three, which I call a three bet. I don't know what your large is. That could be different than mine, whatever. I don't care. I'm just doing it for this. Also, we had the under, which was... This time, I think I made a mistake, and we learn as we go, uh, I, or I learn as I go. Um, sometimes when it's really likely that it's going to be an over, I should just do the over. But my thinking was if the Sabres were to win this game, and they have been grinding it out pretty good, and they did come back in this game, it was more than likely going to be an under because it was more than likely that because Allmark played out of his head and happened to win the game. And the Sabres generally don't score much. So I covered my bet with the under, but really went hard on what the most likely bet was, was capitals in regulation, which we hit. So at 60 times 3, that's 120, that's 180. We lost a unit on the under. I think I did. I, I, I don't know if I went a unit. No, I think I went small pearls, half a unit on the under. So we're up like just over another unit or Pearl, as I like to call it, same thing. Uh, Penguins versus Devils. Again, we went the under on here because the Devils, I had a feeling they could actually win this. They're loose right now. There's nothing to lose. Um, all the, their trade deadline, they don't have things in their head going, okay, what is management going to do? They already know. They're in a rebuilding mode. They have young players coming up, and they're going to play hard to stay in the NHL. So there's a possible, there's a, about a 20 to 25% chance that Devils can win this. So I put it on under. You never know. Penguins could win and it could be under. It's pr it, if, if the Penguins do win, it's probably going to be an over. And it's very likely that they're going to win. I almost puck line this, but I don't like to puck line too often. So I went in reg. I went large. I think this was paying 170 Something like that. So we did about the same as we did in the previous bet. We were up like uh, from that up a little bit, about a unit, unit and a quarter again on that play. 
Rangers versus Islanders. We're going to lose a bit here. We had, we did have the under. Now I had the under. Um, this time, not based on whether the Rangers won. I had the under because the Islanders in these situations playing on a back to back are almost always under. Sometimes I just go to trends and go to the under. However, I didn't have it as my biggest play. I really thought the Islanders were going to crush this. What did I learn from this game? I think what I learned from this game when there's back to backs, the Islanders just had a very emotional time here in a back to back. Yes, they got good players, but it was a very, even elation and excitement can be draining. And you're playing against young legs like the Rangers. And I thought about this, but I thought, you know what? I can't go against this Islanders record at home. And I went heavy too. I went on a three pearl for the Islanders money line and we lost. So we were up about six and a half, seven. Now we're down to about four, four and a half, somewhere around there. However, we're back up one more because we did take the under on this. Just under one. So now we had the blues. This was big. We had the blues. Um, the thing is, we also had the under. So we're only up about a quarter of a pearl on that. So we're up about four and a half to four, seven, five. We're up for the week again, too. And Joe Boric hit three for four on ball today. We, we were 50-50 on tennis. One, one correct, one incorrect. But the three for four put us up two more units. So overall, on the day, if you were to bet every bet I have on my Patreon, you would have been up three to four units. And this just seems to happen an awful lot. I've had, I've had one down week all year. And right now, I'd say we're up about 20 to 25 units altogether, maybe even more. I haven't actually calculated it all because I just started putting this algorithm together this year. Okay, let's go to our picks for tomorrow. Florida versus Dallas. Uh, I'm not going to bet huge on this because Dallas is in desperation mode. I'm just... Florida just had a tough loss against tough two losses against Carolina. I think they're going to be really angry and in kind of desperation mode themselves here. This could be a really close game. I think it's a day game. I think that's going to be a tight game. I think it's going to be a tough game. And I like the fact that Florida's getting dog odds in this situation. Almost a coin flip. If either team wins here, it could be an under. So I'm just going to go the under, and I'm going to take Florida for the odds. I'm probably going to lean the under more than the total, but we'll see tomorrow. That can change. Philadelphia versus Boston. i got to go with Boston here. Elliott's going to be in net. He hasn't been playing all that well. He started off early, but he hasn't been playing well lately. It's Swayman, the Swayman kid. Two, two. This is the that's the big thing with this one. Can the Swayman kid keep it up? I'm gonna bank that he can, and uh, I'm also gonna go the under on this. Probably bigger. My bigger play is probably gonna be the under here. Boston has been play plays under a lot. Um, it's a day game, and uh, another thing on the road it, during day games. Road teams generally have a little more advantage than usual. I'm not going to say they have the advantage, but they have a more advantage, more of an advantage than usual because the home team is also out of rhythm where uh, what I mean by that is they don't have the same routine because they're playing during the day. It changes things. Sometimes it can change things a lot. Sometimes for a lot of players, it can be annoying because you got stuff you have to do at home and you got to go to the game it really can be. so. And for a Philadelphia team that's on edge right now, I'm going to lean that that's the case. And Boston wins this. Detroit versus Carolina. I'm taking Carolina heavy here and over. I think they're really going to win this one outright. Detroit has a lot of injuries. They have a lot of young players that have been playing a lot of games. And they're not used to it. 
and their bodies are going to start to break down here. And Carolina, to me, looks driven. I do not think they're going to overlook Detroit here. Um, I even think that they'll pro they may go with Nedeljkovic here, which I think is their better goaltender, even than Morazic. So I'm going to go over, and I'm going Carolina. Now, you say, okay, if Detroit wins, wouldn't this more likely be an under, so I should cover my bet and be an under? I know you're thinking that. Of course you are. <laughs> but in this situation, when you're so confident, sometimes you just go for it. Chicago versus Columbus. Columbus has Rorensky out for the rest of the season. They just traded some players, not significantly because they were injured, uh, Riley Nash, but very important players, and I think they see the writing on the wall here that there's going to be a sell-off. Um, Rorensky is going to take the rest of the season off. A lot of the times in these situations when that, that this is a, uh, a general manager saying, you know what, go take care of yourself. We'll try it again next year. And I think that could be the, pro the thing here that happens. Um, I am not huge on this game, though. The, I'm leaning under, and I'm leaning Chicago. But I'm a little concerned for the same reason with Detroit, that Chicago has a lot of young players getting tired here. And uh, Columbus could be all loosey-goosey in this game and just take it. So um, I'm, not, I'm going to take Chicago. I'm taking them ML just because they have more to play for. And Wierenski is out, which is huge for Columbus. The last time he was out, they had a hard time winning. I'm hoping they go with Corpus Allo here and not Merzlikens, at least for the Chicago win portion. For the under portion, I'm not so hopeful of that. And that may change tomorrow. That's the reason why it's a good idea to go over to the Patreon. I'll put it in the uh, uh, description. Hit the link. I'll give you the rest of the month for free. You can try it out. You don't like it, just get out. It doesn't co won't cost you anything. And if you ever want to get out, you can take the lower tiers. we got a $5 tier, a $20 tier. And if you ever want to get out, you're not. It, you can get out whenever you want. So, Winnipeg versus Montreal. These are, this is tough games. A lot of these games are very tough. Montreal is going to be rolling Allen again. Allen has played very well. However, when the pressure is completely on Allen, he tends to fold. He is much better in a 1B situation. I'm going to say that Hollabuck wins this again for Winnipeg. It's going to be tough because this is another game against Montreal on the road where uh, Winnipeg doesn't need it, need it. You can make a case that Montreal needs this win more. But it's hard for me to go against Winnipeg, especially with getting dog odds. I think it's close. I could see Montreal winning this. Gallagher is also out. I'm going to go Winnipeg. i got to go Winnipeg here. And uh, what did I have? I had the over five and a half. Yeah, I like the over on here. Simply because if Winnipeg, if Montreal does win, it means that they got through to Hellebuck. Uh, and it would almost certainly be over. Uh, Winnipeg's probably going to score on Allen. So I'm going to go the over to cover my butt. It's more likely that Winnipeg can win and, be, and the under happen because Montreal can't score on Hellebuck. And they score enough on Allen to win. So... I'm going to go the over to cover my butt in case Montreal wins because it's more likely that they do. I'll probably just put a unit on it or a half a unit and Winnipeg, you know, medium pearls or something like that. Toronto versus Ottawa. I'm going to go, I got to go Toronto. Um, question, do I go puck line? I think I do. Toronto, I think, is really driven to get first overall right now. Um, they see. I think they also see that Toronto look like they're buyers at the deadline, and this should give them quite the boost. I think Ottawa's fading fast here. They got a lot of young players. Not that they're not trying. I mean, they outshot Edmonton the last game they played them, but I don't think that's happened here with Toronto. Edmonton doesn't. Edmonton is a team that'll play down to its opposition. Toronto is a team that likes to crush in these situations. So. I'm going to take Toronto, I'm going to take the puck line, and I'm going to take over five and a half. Or is it over six? Sorry about that. Nashville, Tampa Bay. I'm taking Nashville puck line here, but not for much. Tampa just crushed Columbus, and it's a there's a possibility that they're going to uh, 
that they're back on track again and pushing towards the finish line to get first as well. I'm not huge on this game at all. And by morning, I may change my mind to the Tampa ML, but I have a feeling Nashville is just going to... Tampa can get outworked, and Nashville is outworking everybody right now. So I'm going to say Nashville. I'm going to say Soros plays well here. Uh, I think it's going to be Soros. Again, keep tabs. Go over to Patreon if, if there are goaltender issues. Uh, whatever they come up, I post it on Patreon and I say, switch this, switch that, because of this goaltender and all that kind of stuff like that. So you get updates. St. Louis versus Minnesota. Don't really have lines here, don't have a total. I'm going to go Minnesota though. St. Louis just beat the crap out of them. The thing is, St. Louis is going to be paying, playing their backup goaltender. Uh, I always forget. Huso, Billy Huso. Minnesota's going to be playing Talbot. Talbot really has been playing a heck of a lot better. So I'm going to go with Minnesota here. Edmonton versus Calgary. I'm taking Calgary. I know that's surprising to a lot because they've been playing so poorly. Edmonton's playing four games in six nights on the road. They just went from Ottawa to Calgary through three time zones for this game and Edmonton is not a good tired team and they really didn't play very well against Ottawa I think Calgary is needs they're going to find something to define their season and they're looking at this as that win this one to define our season to give us pride and we'll see if they do it but I'm going with them in this one San Jose versus uh, Los Angeles this is a coin flip game I'm gonna take uh, Los Angeles I wonder if Los Angeles is coming back in that game uh, down 3-2 with five minutes left so we'll see if they happen to pull it out every time I turn this game on LA is in San Jose zone Every single time I turn over to that game, the, I, I like to. I don't know what the shots are in this game, but they look like they're completely outplaying San Jose. And uh, San Jose is going to have Dubnik in, and then Quick. One thing I do like about that game, I don't like betting overs on back to backs, but with those two goaltenders, I think I might go it. They can let in a lot of goals. LA is going to need this. The way they're playing now. I think L.A. will be just still outplay them tomorrow and win that game. I'm going to take L.A. money line. Uh, if L.A. does win it, though, would it be an over? I think it's more likely that it's an over if San Jose wins. So I actually might go under to cover my bet on that one. See what I'm saying? Take the under. No. Take the over. If San Jose wins, it's likely going to be over. If LA wins, it's li it's more likely to be under. But it's po it's a, it's also very possible it could be under and LA wins. In which case, there's a very good chance we break even or close to it, and uh, the greater chance that we're up money. And that's how I'm making my plays now. Thank you, boys and girls, for listening to this fine program. That's all your picks in the land. There, holy smokes, 28 minutes. I got to let you go. Okay, bye. <laughs>